as she said, my name is Anahita Irvin I'm from the Oklahoma Policy Institute. I'm the fiscal policy analyst. And today we'll be talking about tax credits as a way to alleviate poverty. It's a short presentation, so it'll be quick. <laughs> um, and just briefly at Oklahoma Policy Institute, we use um, data-informed approaches to build toward an Oklahoma where all families can thrive, and hopefully this presentation plays into that value. To give you an idea of what this, what's to come in this presentation, we will first talk about uh, what tax credits are, define some terminology around tax credits, and go over how tax credits have been proven to alleviate poverty. And then we will discuss what tax credits are available to low-income Oklahomans and how we can improve those targeted tax credits um, to provide more relief to families. The tax system is a critical part of the safety net. More than one-third of all public supports for families in the United States are delivered through tax provisions. And therefore, tax credits can drastically alleviate poverty. So let's define some terminology. What are tax credits? Tax credits are dollar-for-dollar dollar amounts that reduce what an individual owes in taxes. These credits can be refundable or non-refundable. Refundable means that any credit amount left over after a person pays their taxes is refunded to that taxpayer. Refundability allows low-income taxpayers to benefit from the surplus tax credit amount. Non-refundable tax credits are less useful to low-income taxpayers because low-income taxpayers tend to have low tax liability. Lastly, regressive taxes. Regressive taxes are those that are applied uniformly to all income levels, which puts a higher burden on lower income families because they end up paying a larger portion of their income in those taxes. So an example of that is sales taxes. Tax credits provide vital support, as my colleague Anthony illustrated, and are proven to reduce poverty. Some of the largest federal tax credits reduce poverty by supplementing low earnings, assisting with the cost of raising children, or covering childcare needs. And state versions of these tax credits can further boost these benefits. The refundable tax credit amount allows families to meet their necessities and shift their mindset from mere survival to planning for their future. And they've also been shown to improve educational outcomes for children as they do better in school, are more likely to attend college, and therefore are expected to earn higher incomes. Lastly, the child tax credit and the earned income tax credit have been shown to have a positive impact on the labor market, breaking that narrative that tax credits reduce uh, incentives to, uh, to work. So with that, let's talk about ta three targeted tax credits in Oklahoma that are meant to help low-income families, starting with the sales tax relief credit, which works to alleviate, um, sorry, which works by reducing the regressivity of the sales tax. Cre uh, it was initially created in 1990 to reduce the cost of sales taxes, the, the burden of sales taxes, but the credit amount um, has not changed in over three decades, staying at $40 per person. The sales tax relief credit has therefore lost 60% of its buying value in that time. In the meantime, while, states, while the state of Oklahoma has eliminated the state grocery sales tax, other state sales taxes as well as county and city sales taxes means that low-income Oklahomans are still paying a lot of money in sales taxes. It is also, um, it's also only available to eligible families or individuals that make below a certain income, which is $20,000 or less for individuals and $50,000 or less for families, elderly folks, and people with disabilities. And this table here compares us um, to other states around us that, or in general, that have a sales tax relief credit, some form of it. And it clearly shows that as a state, we are significantly lagging behind. So we need to modernize our sales tax credit. And how can we do that? First, we can start by increasing the amount from $40 per person to $200 per person. We can increase the eligibility, uh, income eligibility to expand it to cover more households. And the credit should have a phase out scheme as um, our partners from CBPP were just talking about, which can help um, uh, prevent people from experiencing a benefit cliff. 
The next is the earned income tax credit. Um, it's a targeted way to boost economic security. The way it works in Oklahoma is that the Oklahoma earned income tax credit is 5% of the 2020 federal earned income tax credit. And four of our six neighboring states have larger earned income tax credits than we do. And to give an idea of how much this, how much this, how much this benefits families, um, the earned income tax credit amount changes with the number of dependents a family can claim. But currently, for a family with one dependent, the Oklahoma uh, earned income tax credit is $179. If we change that from 5% of the 2020 to 5% of the most recent federal earned income tax credit, then it jumps up to barely $211. But if we increase that from 5% to 25%, it significantly increases to a little over $1,000, which is enough money to actually cover rent or other needs a family might have. So some modernizing options for the sales tax relief credit. Um, are tying the state earned income tax credit to the annual federal credit so that it accounts for inflation, expanding it from 5% to 25% of the most recent federal earned income tax credit, and make it more accessible for all taxpayers um, to access these programs. And lastly, the child tax credit is a tool specifically can be used to decrease child poverty in the state. It was created um, to provide financial relief to low-income families with children and as seen with the, tax, the child tax credit expansion at the federal level in 2021, it was able to reduce child poverty by nearly one third in just six months. That's, that speaks to how po positively this, this tool can be used. Similar to the earned income tax credit, the Oklahoma child tax credit is also 5% of the federal child tax credit, and it is non-refundable. Um, and in Oklahoma specifically, understanding and claiming the child tax credit can require some specialized knowledge because families have to choose between the greater of 5% of a child tax credit or 20% of the child or dependent care tax credit, which can get confusing. Lastly, it's available to families with an income less than $100,000 annually. So how can we modernize the child tax credit to actually help families that need it? First, we can make it refundable to increase its effectiveness. We should create an Oklahoma child tax credit that is independent of the federal credit because of the uncertainty around the continuation of the federal child tax credit at the moment. Decoupling the state credit from the federal credit removes uncertainty and gives the state of Oklahoma more freedom to set the amount high enough to actually decrease state poverty rates and benefit families that need it. It also helps us avoid the shortcomings of the federal child tax credit. Many other states have already done this um, successfully. However, this decoupling of the child tax credit from the federal credit is a long-term undertaking. So in the short term, the state of Oklahoma can improve its current credit by increasing the credit amount to at least 45% of the federal child tax credit, or up to 60%, which would be comparable to other states at about $900 to $1,200 per child. With that, I conclude my presentation.